In this video, I'm going to be reading and reacting to all of your confessions. So stay tuned and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're excited for the video and want to see more. I must admit, that was rather impressive. The kid's a natural. Her voice seems different from ours. Any explanations in your flathead? One of our employees volunteered to help design her voice. Guys? That's why it sounds so natural. Um. So this is just one of our employees speaking? Hello? Not really. This is still AI. Are and we listening? had to alter the voice to make sure it didn't sound exactly like her. Guys? I am to assume that this has something to do with encrypted privacy. Exactly. Can I have your- But one way or another, she helped us out big time. Guys? And how much more did we pay this employee? About three Starbucks coffees, plus a donut. Sounds like a fair trade-off to me. Why are you two just ignoring me? Because your voice seems to be mildly aggravating to my ears. Excuse me? Anyway, we have a bunch of confessions ready to be read by you. But... Ready, Charlie? Uh, fine. All right, then. Let's get started. By the way, for the sake of privacy, we altered all the names and a lot of the stories to make it more PG-13. Not to mention the fact that it makes the video much more entertaining. Okay, so the first confession is from a user called... Uh, we're listening. This is a joke, right? Nope. Welcome to the internet. This first confession is from someone called Picklehand347. Average Reddit name. This one time, I was greening my pickle when my doorbell rang. I put on some pants and answered the door. It was two friends stopping by to say hi. One of them reached out to shake my hand. He was a tall, buff black guy, and my hand still had grace on it. Relatable. Hold on for a second. Why are they being specific about the race? Just keep reading. Um, okay. Thank you. I stared at his hand for a second, very nervously might I add. The two friends thought I was disgusted with shaking his hand. I was too scared and didn't want to come off rude or mean, so I shook his hand. Quite the decision. Tell me about it. I stopped talking to that friend, because I was super embarrassed. And for some reason, to this day, he thinks that I'm racist. Huh. I wonder why he would think such a thing. I haven't got the slightest clue, my dear. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack here. Keep in mind, by the way, this is the first one, and it gets a lot worse. Thanks for the encouragement. Anyway, I wouldn't necessarily say that caring for your friend and making sure he doesn't touch your, well, you know, graced hand. Yeah, I mean, the guy had no idea you were committing arson on yourself. But I feel like letting him know and explaining everything to clear things up would help out a lot. You know, closure. Or just say that you were eating an orange. Uh, why is it that every time we do these sorts of videos, I discover things about you that I wish I never knew? Let's just say that I eat a lot of oranges on my free time. You and Valentina both. Overall, I wouldn't say that your sin is outlandish, but it definitely isn't acceptable either. As long as you clear things up, of course. If you had to give it a rating, on a scale of 1 to 10, how bad would you rate it? Do we really have to do a rating? Absolutely. On a scale of 1 to 10, I would probably have to say a solid 3. 3 inches is crazy. Let's move on to the next one, shall we? This next confession is from someone named Dried Kids Wear Pop Arrests 1997. Who wrote these outlandish nicknames? Hater. My girlfriend and I lived with my parents and had nowhere to play baby oil with Diddy. Play what? Shut up. She's reading. One day, oil needed to be spilled in the well, and my parents went away to help my grandparents with some farm work. I bet they're from Ohio. And I bet we'll get demonetized if you don't shut the f*** up. Their bed seemed extra luscious for some reason, and temptations went beyond our control. So we started the oil pouring rig. Sadly, we were head deep into the processes, and when the jig was up, I realized I wasn't wearing the kid's balloon. We panicked, I retrieved the sword, and both of us got our grace on the bed sheets. Just as we caught our breath and decided to get rid of the evidence, my parents arrived back home. We both ran out and acted like no felonies were committed. Multiple felonies were committed. They slept on that bed. I'll never forget it. And I thought hell was bad. Indeed. The children of this generation prove us wrong on quite the scale. And here I was, thinking that I was the bad guy. This little terrorist took the word diabolical to a whole nother level. Well, this is... something, to say the least. Something? Really? It's definitely worse than the last one, that's for sure. Similar to the last confession, don't you think they should inform the elders about No! Their for the love of Christ, please don't. You're talking like what they did was not that bad at all. Yes, it's bad, and you should probably go to church for what you've done. But whatever you do, don't tell your parents, or anyone for that matter. I'm telling you, some things are just better kept for yourself. I mean, if you really want to tell someone, go to a priest. Don't tell them that. You want the poor man to have a heart attack? 
Are you talking about the priest? No, Charlie, we're talking about your dad's left testicle. Just rate the sin and move on to the next one. What the f is your problem? Can we just move on? Fine. Six out of ten. Just like you. Excuse me? Did I f***ing stutter? Uh, you got a problem with me? Guys? What do you think, princess? Can Are you, you not? Are you trying to get on my bad side? Hello? Who do you think you're talking to? Can we, uh... I thought it was quite obvious. I'm talking to my b Is everyone calm? Did everyone get it out of their system? Yes. yes. Do I need to cut the cameras again? No. Please don't. Perfect. Let's move on to the next one. The next confession is from no Logic Nuker 0113 His name alone sounds like a lawsuit. Well, let's see if he deserves one. Every time I decide to drop a nuclear bomb in the local 7-Eleven, I get scared that I will get teleported to a public place and get laughed upon. Excuse me, drop a what? Do 7-Elevens even have a bathroom? Do I look like someone that visits a store with a name as silly as 7-Eleven? You want me to be honest? You. You know what? This one isn't all that bad at all. Charlie? Yeah? Turn to the next page. Oh. Exactly. The feeling of embarrassment is so bad that I tend to lay a few on the floor just to feel safer. She's joking, right? If it's really bad, I just smudge some on the walls as well, just to be extra safe. She's not joking. P.S. I've been banned from multiple stores, restaurants, and fast food chains. Probably for the best. Honestly, I think that this was the most disgusting one of them all. I always hear tales of bathrooms that are filled with human excrements, almost as if the person using it was deliberately trying to miss the bowl. Yet I must admit, never quite thought of it as being true. You didn't have that back in your day, did you? Fortunately enough, no. Lucky bitch. Eight out of ten. Moving on. Huh? Wait, what? I said moving on. Are we not going to talk about this one? I mean, I feel like this is a traumatic story where the main character is struggling with a mental- The guy is rubbing literal shit on the walls. The do you want me to talk about? Consistency? You know what? Good point. Let's move on to the next one. How many do we have left anyway? Two more, if we include the one we're about to read. Should we read both of them? Or leave it at the current one? I mean, I'm interested so far. Speak for yourself, Fox. Thanks for the kind gesture, Charlie. I haven't heard that one in a while. Can we please move on? Up next is a confession by Daddy's Naughty Barbie 69. Quite the promising name, might I say. You should hear the story. As a child, I played many silly games on the playground. Me and my friends would play robbery in a mansion. My ex-husband kidnapped my baby. Or, my husband is a secret drug lord. The usual games kids play. Excuse me, what? Show me which kid plays those types of games. Is this the new Gen Alpha Sigma games, or? Dude, you're making it worse. As I was saying, my favorite game was dolls. Something tells me that this story is gonna take quite the turn. We would use ourselves as dolls and follow a set of rules. Stick to your owner, don't speak unless your owner speaks to you, and you can't let any of the other guests see you move. Your objective was to learn secrets about the guests and tell your owner without being caught. Told you. I'm never letting my daughter on Reddit, that's for sure. Funny to assume the fact that you'll even have a daughter. Damn, that was actually a good one. Shut up and keep reading. P Excuse me? As I grew older, I started obsessing over the game and started playing it with every person I was in a relationship with. I would clean the entire house for them and give them gifts. I would dance and give them affection. I would do anything they asked of me, follow their routines, plan their schedules, and do everything they ever asked me to do. What a good little girl. What? Nothing. Can you two just stop? Sorry. As I was saying, if my husband ever got bored of me, he would lock me in my room. Like putting me in a case. He could pick my voice, the way I sit, the way I touch his face and body, and everything in between. So far, so good. One night, my husband came home, with blood all over his face and hands. You had to open your f***ing mouth. Sorry. He smiled as soon as he saw me, telling me that he needed help with taking the trash out. I smiled, stood up, and followed him into the car. We threw the massive bag in the ocean with a heavy rock tied to it. Six years later, he got arrested and put in jail for a lifetime. I don't know if I should have said something before. I was just doing my job. Honestly, I like the second half of the story more than the first one. Speak for yourself. The first part was much more wholesome than the second one. None of the story was wholesome. What the f*** is wrong with you two? Everything. Everything. This person not only contributed to an innocent soul getting murdered, they literally helped the killer hide the body. Oh my goodness. How horrible. What a tragedy. Who would do such a thing? Not me. And you two are making this worse. You don't say. As if contributing to murder and hiding a body wasn't bad enough. You didn't tell anyone for six years. Smart move, to be honest. And you expect me not to rate this a 10 out of 10? Okay, so hear me out. They shouldn't technically be in hell. In what world? 
world is this acceptable? She was being a good and loyal wife. Maybe her mental state wasn't all that good, but she was doing what she thought was best. Doesn't that, like, not count as a sin? He does bring a solid argument to the table, dear. Heaven is all about loyalty, providing help with everything you possibly can. In essence, they were doing just that. Do you two seriously think that she did nothing wrong? Nah. We're just messing with you. Oh, f*** you. No thanks. We have standards. Can we just read the last one and get this over with? All right, all right. We'll let you read. Thank you. I'm actually curious to hear the final story. Same. The final confession is from a user called Mommy's Little Christian Pickle Greaser 420. On second thought, I'm not all that interested. Yeah, no, f*** that. You can kiss my ass if you think I'm reading anything after this sh I think the name alone spoke for everything. Yeah. We're getting canceled if I read or even show what's next. Monetization would be very nice. A paycheck would be amazing. Some sins are just beyond forgiveness. This name alone is a great example. And we can always read it in the next video. Exactly. If the video does well, we'll do a part two. Scrub scribe!